Hello and welcome to Hoosier Nation on this week's episode of This is Indiana. I'm Lindsay Wright. And I'm Olivia Ray. Welcome back to the weekly program that gives you an up close and personal look at some of your favorite IU athletes, coaches, and facilities. Plus, much more. Yep, that's not all we have for you. Watch here for previews, updates, and highlights from around Hoosier Nation. We're excited to have you. have been hard at work this week. We have the latest game coverage for you right here, so let's get down to it. It ended up being the football team took a tough loss over the homecoming weekend to Big Ten matchup Nebraska. It ended up being a close game for the Hoosiers as they took on the Cornhuskers for the first time in 38 years. They battled their way back from a 17-point deficit in the first quarter. Mitchell Page led all receivers, catching nine for 101 yards, and Ricky Jones followed with six catches. The team made a comeback with several big plays, one being Chase Dutra's special teams punt block, others being Tony Fields and Jonathan Crawford's interceptions. IU ultimately fell to the number 10 ranked Cornhuskers 27 to 22 in the last few minutes of the game. The team takes to the road this weekend, heading to Evanston, Illinois, to take on Northwestern. Kickoff is at noon Eastern time. The volleyball team split the weekend, getting the win against Rutgers, but taking a loss to Penn State. On Friday, the team dropped the first set against Rutgers, but came back to win the match in 3-1. Senior Allison Hammond led with 19 kills and 8 digs. The team couldn't keep the momentum going and fell in three sets to Penn State on Saturday. Hammond once again led the Hoosiers, this time with 10 kills, and the team is now 13-8 and eight on the season. The men's soccer team keeps their season record at one loss. On Tuesday of last week, the Hoosiers took down number two Louisville on the road 2-1. to one. Grant Lillard netted his second goal of the season with an assist from Jeremiah Gutyar and Trevor Swartz. Scored the game winner on a penalty kick. IU is now 3-1 and one and 2 against rank opponents this season. Then on Saturday, they took on the Ohio State Buckeyes, which ended in a 2-2 two -two draw. With the result, the Hoosiers moved to 8-1-5. and five. The women's soccer team adds a pair of wins to their season. Last Thursday, the Hoosiers took down Ohio State in a tight win, topping the Buckeyes 3-2 in Columbus. And on Sunday, the girls traveled to College Park, Maryland to take on the Terps in another Big Ten matchup. IU redshirt senior Mariska Borschke headed in the only goal of the game in the 34th minute as the Hoosiers move to 7-7-3 on their season. Coming up, we have a special guest joining us here on set. More from Indiana's field hockey star, Kate Barber. We'll be right back. I'm Sage Steele of ESPN. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Indiana University. Welcome back to This is Indiana. It was a crazy weekend here in the Hoosier Nation as fans ventured out for homecoming festivities. A parade took place through downtown on Friday, and Big Ten Tailgate was outside Memorial Stadium for the first time ever, where fans, cheerleaders, Hoosier Olympians, and even Antoine Randall L. made an appearance on the network. And although IU football did not bring home the win, players remain optimistic on the last half of their regular season. That's right. We talked to some players post-game about Indiana's newfound defensive strength and how senior leaders feel a sense of confidence moving forward. I think our D-line getting pass rush is huge. Um, you know, we do have to keep them contained, and um, that's something that hurt us 
in this game. And I think we're going to keep growing. And it's only the beginning. We're only scratching the surface of where we can be. I don't want to say we were hoping to win last year, but now we're confident we're going to get a stop. And we didn't tonight or whatever. Didn't make the plays that we needed to make tonight. But when you're on the sideline, you're confident in everybody and everyone believes in each other. So that's what I would say is the biggest difference. There's not any hope. It's I know that we're going to make a play. As a team, we have confidence in each other. And, you know, there's a lot of guys with more experience out there. And people aren't trying to make plays. Everybody's just doing their job. So that's huge. Indiana field hockey continues to power through their season. They upset number 12 Michigan last Friday. Senior Kate Barber scored the only goal the Hoosiers needed on a penalty stroke to seal the deal. Noel Ruta and the defensive back line secured their third shutout of the season. This was the Hoosiers' first Big Ten away win of the season. Then on Saturday, the Hoosiers took on Michigan State, where they fell 1-0. The Spartans pulled ahead in the sixth minute on their first penalty corner opportunity. However, IU's Ruta followed that with nine saves to hold the Spartans to a 1-0 lead. Offense was not able to execute any of their four shots on the goal. The Hoosiers are now in a tie with Michigan State for fifth place in Big Ten standings. And let's continue the conversation about the powerhouse team. Right now we go over to Olivia, who's joined by one of the most dominating players on the field hockey team. Joining me now is an Indiana field hockey midfielder, defender, all of the above, who has a collection of NCAA and Big Ten honors, which she rightfully earned with her competitive scoring ability. Senior captain and St. Louis native, Kate Barber, had 15 goals in 10 games to start off her last season here at IU. This 1.5 goal per game average led all NCAA Division I scorers. And she leads the Big Ten in game winning goals. Just this weekend, Kate scored the goal to give Indiana their first Big Ten away win of the season to upset Michigan. This goal put her one goal away to Indiana's single season record. Now she is preparing for her final home game as a Hoosier with senior night coming up this Friday. Kate, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, Kate, this game that we were just talking about where you upset Michigan, that was actually Indiana Field Hockey's first road win against a ranked opponent in 10 years, and you netted that game-winning goal. So how did that feel, and what was your teammates' reaction to that? Um, I think just all around we were all so excited um, for Taylor Pearson to get the opportunity to, to get the stroke called for us. Um, was It was great um, attacking for us. Um, and then for AJ to have the confidence in me to take the stroke, um, I think it just kind of gives me a lot of energy and like fight to want to put the ball in the back of the net. And yeah, you definitely have a lot of fight. You're now just one goal away from Indiana's single season record and you are right up there in NCAA scores. Um, how do you hope to wrap up the season? What are your personal goals? Um, I think just for me, just kind of leaving everything out there on the field. Um, I've been playing field hockey almost all my life, so really just going out with a bang and leaving the team with everything that I came here and everything that I've learned throughout the, my four years here and really just kind of leaving a path for them to pick up on. And like you said, your team, you've been with them for a while now but you only have three games left in this season. What are your goals for the Big Ten tournament and looking past that? Um, obviously one of our goals for uh, Big Tens is to win the Big Ten championship, um, but first we gotta get to the tournament now that one team doesn't make it. But um, I think we've kind of solidified our uh, slot in the Big Ten tournament, so really just finding out where we seed and who we're gonna face next um, in the tournament. And like you said, you've been playing field hockey almost your entire life. So can you tell me how you started and when that began? Yeah, I started playing in fourth grade. Um, I played soccer growing up um, since I was in preschool. Um, and my mom worked with uh, the director of Gateway Field Hockey in St. Louis, Kelly Yates. Um, and she said, well, she's a good soccer player, so she must be good at field hockey. So um, my mom signed me up for a camp, and that was it. <laughs> so um, I think just taking taking pride in the St. Louis area and really kind of just doing all those camps and um, tournaments and uh, USA field hockey stuff really just kind of boosted my level and got me here. And like you said, you started because of your mom and a colleague's interest, but do you have any family members in the game? Um, field hockey is a predominantly East Coast sport here in the U.S., mm -hmm. which is where most of your team is from. So what was it like playing here in St. Louis close to Indiana? Um, I think it's kind of interesting that like on our team we don't have any in-state 
um, girls. So everyone's from out of state, and I think we all come here for the same reason, obviously, is to play field hockey. And um, coming out of St. Louis um, throughout the Midwest, it's a different game. Um, going out East Coast, like, everyone's very competitive. Like, we are in the Midwest as well, but it's two different games of hockey, and we really just look to – uh, boost our level as well. Um, getting out there to do tournaments and playing those teams um, really helps through, uh, build the game of hockey. Absolutely, but you had 92 goals when you were in high school. You produced 92 goals, now 26 in your Indiana career. So you've always had that competitive scores ability, whether you're on the West Coast, East Coast, traveling wherever you were. Um, when did you think you developed that will to win, that competitive scoring attitude? Um, I think for any athlete, it's just kind of instilled in you. Um, I think that in every game you go out to compete and you, you go out to win the game. Um, I don't really know a specific like example of when I did, but every time I step on that field, like I just kind of you just get that drive in you and every time you step on the field for practice, even um, you go out and you compete as hard as you can, and you try and leave everything out there on the field. And so you have actually started and played in every game since you came here as a yeah. Hoosier, 68 total. And this Friday you will play your last home game as a Hoosier. So how is that going to feel for you? Um, it's definitely bittersweet. Um, I think coming in and playing as a freshman, like it was definitely a, um, a big opportunity for me. And I think leaving now um, on Friday, it'll be it, it'll be sad, but I'm really excited to get out there with my team one more time and um, kind of just play the game. And so you are leaving in May. You'll be leaving Bloomington. Can you tell us about some of your career goals outside of field hockey? Yeah, um, I'll graduate in May, and then um, I'm going to be here in the summer, actually. So hopefully I'll get to see the team some more still, um, enjoy Bloomington a little bit more as well. Um, I think after that, I got an opportunity to actually go play in Australia. So just for fun, so I might end up doing that just for the experience. But um, my future goal is to attend nursing school. Um, I'll probably go back to St. Louis for that. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it. Well, Bloomington will definitely miss you, Kate, and thanks for joining us today. Lindsay? Thanks, Olivia. Up next, we have your IU Athletics schedule for the week. We'll tell you when and where you can catch your Hoosiers in action coming up. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Indiana University. Welcome back to This is Indiana. Now we take a look at where your favorite IU athletes will be all week long. The number seven men's soccer team is on the road Friday. The team takes on Big Ten opponent Wisconsin. The teams kick off at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And the women's soccer team travels to West Lafayette on Saturday to battle Purdue for the Golden Boot. The game is at 7 p.m. and will be aired on Big Ten Plus. And volleyball travels to take on Illinois University on Friday starting at 8 p.m., then matches up with Northwestern Sunday at 4 p.m. And the field hockey's final home game for the season is Friday at 3 p.m. The team will battle Ohio State, and the seniors' players will be honored beforehand. You can watch the game on Big Ten Plus. The cross-country team is not back in action until the end of the month. The Big Ten Conference Championships will be held in Minneapolis on October 30th. Indiana Swim and Dive hosts a tri-meet this Friday where they will face Texas and Florida. The meet will begin at 2 p.m. in the Billingsley Councilman Natatorium. And IU football is on the road this weekend. The team looks, back, looks to bounce back against Northwestern. It will be the first time the two teams will play each other since 2012. The game starts at noon Eastern time and you can catch it on the Big Ten Network. And that does it for us this week, but we'll be back right here next week to bring you more highlights, updates, and previews. That's right. Also, you can send in your ideas to the show. We want to know what you want to see on This is Indiana. Tweet us at Olivia Wright and at Lindsay Wright. 
Thanks for watching and we'll see you back here next week.